Hi, my friends. I'm going to be reading a chapter book with you, and I hope you enjoy it. After each chapter, I'm going to talk a little bit about either something that the author is doing in the chapter, or something you might want to think about as you listen to the story, especially as we move forward. I hope you enjoy James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. Let's start with chapter one. Chapter one. Here is James Henry Trotter when he was about four years old. Up until this time, he had a happy life, living peacefully with his mother and father in a beautiful house beside the sea. There were always plenty of other children for him to play with, and there was the sandy beach for him to run about on, and the ocean to paddle in. It was a perfect life for a small boy. Then, one day, James's mother and father went to London to do some shopping, and there a terrible thing happened. Both of them suddenly got eaten up in full daylight, mind you, on a crowded street by an enormous angry rhinoceros, which had escaped from the London Zoo. Now, this, as you can well imagine, was a rather nasty experience for two such gentle parents. But in the long run, it was far nastier for James than it was for them. Their troubles were over in a jiffy. Poor James, on the other hand, was still very much alive. And all at once, he found himself alone and frightened in a vast, unfriendly world. The lovely house by the seaside had to be sold immediately, and the little boy, carrying nothing but a small suitcase containing a pair of pajamas and a toothbrush, was sent away to live with his two aunts. Their names were Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker, and I'm sorry to say that they were both really horrible people. They were selfish and lazy and cruel, and right from the beginning they started beating poor James for almost no reason at all. They never called him by his real name, but always referred to him as, you disgusting little beast, or you filthy nuisance, or you miserable creature. And they certainly never gave him any toys to play with or any picture books to look at. His room was as bare as a prison cell. They lived, Aunt Sponge, Aunt Spiker, and now James as well, on a queer ramshackle house on the top of a high hill in the south of England. The hill was so high that from almost anywhere in the garden, James could look down and see for miles and miles across the marvelous landscape of woods and fields. And on a very clear day, if he looked in the right direction, he could see a tiny gray dot far away on the horizon, which was a house that he used to live on with his beloved mother and father. And just beyond that, he could see the ocean itself, a long, thin streak of blackish blue, like a line of ink beneath the rim of the sky. But James was never allowed to go down off the top of that hill. Neither Aunt Sponge nor Aunt Spiker could ever be bothered to take him out herself, not even for a small walk or a picnic. And he certainly wasn't permitted to go alone. That nasty little beast will only get into mischief if he goes out of the garden. Aunt Spiker had said, and terrible punishments were promised him, such as being locked up in the cellar with rats for a week, if he so much as dared to climb over the fence. The garden, which covered the whole of the top of the hill, was large and desolate, and the only tree in the entire place, apart from a clump of dirty laurel bushes, at the far end, was an ancient peach tree that never gave any peaches. There was no swing, no seesaw, no sand pit, 
and no other children were ever invited to come up on the hill to play with poor James. There wasn't so much as a dog or cat around to keep him company. And as time went on, he became sadder and sadder, and more and more lonely. And he used to spend hours every day standing at the bottom of the garden, gazing wistfully at the lovely but forbidden world of woods and fields and ocean that was spread out below him like a magic carpet. Wow. That's a really tough beginning for poor James. The author is using the beginning of the story to introduce us to the main character, who's James. It introduces us to the circumstances that are behind why the action in the book takes place. So we're introduced not only to James, but to his two terrible aunts, as well as the setting, which is the top of the hill with that really old peach tree. With a title like James and the Giant Peach, I wonder if that's gonna come into play later on in the story. Think about things that you might consider as a beginning point in stories that you've heard. Is there something that marks a beginning and makes it different from a middle or an end? How would you introduce a character to get us interested in what was going to happen to him or her. Think about things like beginnings, setting, and characters as you might listen to chapter one again. And I look forward to reading chapter two to you. Thank you.